Did you ever get so depressed of being overweight that you dieted? I can say I've probably been on a hundred diets. I can say I've been on grapefruit diets, cookie diets, uh, water diets, protein shake diets, cabbage diets, right? I've been on every, I've been on South Beach, I've been on Weight Watchers, I've been on every diet you could probably imagine. Um, I've done unhealthy things to lose weight, I've done healthy things to lose weight, um, and I do have success, but um, it's only moderate success, I usually gain it back, and they call that yo-yo dieting. So that's when you lose weight and you put it back on. Usually when people yo-yo diet, they lose weight, and they put it on, but they add more on. So it's really a, a vicious cycle. Yes? How much do you plan to lose each week? Oh my gosh, you know, they get you up on those big scales, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, in front of America, in a little tiny tank top, and those tight biker shorts, and I'm gonna be in front of America, weighing in, I wanna lose at least seven pounds every week. I hope sometimes double digits, maybe 10 pounds um, here and there, but I would be pretty disappointed with less than seven on any given week. Yes? Who motivated you to be on Biggest Loser? I'm gonna say my children. My children motivated me um, to be on it. Every year they say, Mom, you should go on that show. And I'm like, oh, that means they think I'm fat, right? But that's okay um, because I am overweight and they want what's best for me. So I'm going to say my kids motivate me the most. What's your favorite way to exercise? Uh, my favorite uh, exercise, probably I love elliptical. I love the elliptical machine at my gym. Um, I also like taking dance classes, like if anybody's taking a Zumba class. Has anybody ever heard of that? That's fun. I like that. Um, I like going on walks with my, with my family. Yes? If you make it on, once, once you're off, will you continue to work at staying healthy? Anybody who's at a fit weight or anybody that's overweight and lost weight knows that being fit and being healthy takes effort, right? So it means you have to eat right, you have to eat fruits and vegetables, you have to eat in moderation, you can't overeat. Uh, you have to exercise. Um, so this is really going to be a lifelong commitment. This isn't going to be a crash course for me. This is going to be something that I'm going to be committed to for the rest of my life. Okay, go ahead. Why did you choose Team Willpower? My friend Will chose the name um, and I joined his team. So now we're kind of a partnership. So um, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to come to your classroom. I really want to thank you also for asking really open honest questions and for giving me the opportunity to be open and honest with you guys about my weight loss journey. One of my main goals in this journey is to get to a point where um, you know, we continue to talk about childhood obesity, um, how it affects people, um, because um, it's really hard. It's really hard to be overweight, um, and it's really hard to be overweight as a child especially. That's why I wanted to film here, because at Bamber Valley, I had a lot of really great times, but I also had a lot of heartbreak because kids can be pretty mean. Uh, so I, you know, I, I really want to expose childhood obesity as an epidemic in our country. I want um, children to get fit. I want school lunch programs to have healthy, nutritious foods. Um, I want children to be nice to children who are different than them um, and value diversity and be nice to other, other kids. Uh, so it's really my goal um, to expose and kind of make people aware of a, a variety of things that are really important that face children today. Go Team Willpower! Pick Sherry on Biggest Loser for Season 11 on NBC. This is the elementary school that I uh, went to school, grade school, uh, kindergarten through sixth grade. I'd like to walk you through the classrooms and the hallways and kind of chronologically show you um, my experience as an overweight child. When I joined kindergarten, I weighed a, uh, approximately 60 pounds. When I joined first grade, um, I had put on an additional 15 pounds and was up to 75 pounds. In second grade, I put on another 15 pounds and was 90 pounds. I was clearly the largest child in my classroom, and I attended a school uh, that was very health conscious uh, and was one of the only uh, overweight children uh, who attended school here. I remember in second grade, two boys uh, who taunted and tormented me on a regular basis stole a belt that I'd been wearing and flushed it down the toilet. 
And when the teacher uh, found out about this, she contacted the parents and they had to buy me a new belt, but the belt they bought me was a child size and the belt that I had actually been wearing was an adult size. And so um, it was humiliating to me when they you know, brought it back and they asked me to put it on because it wouldn't fit me. Uh, that was a, a pretty common type of experience that I had here. Um, I was wearing adult clothing uh, starting in second grade through the rest of my elementary school education. Uh, down this hall uh, to my left uh, is where I attended third grade. In third grade, I weighed 105 pounds. In fourth grade, I put on another 15 pounds and weighed 120 pounds. Uh, in fifth grade, I weighed 130 pounds, and by the time I was in sixth grade and left to go to middle school, I weighed 150 pounds. I was the largest child in my elementary school. Some of the stories that I have, I have a, um, a best friend I, I met in first grade, and in first grade, um, she was very tall and willowy, and I was obviously very chunky, um, and people used to call us Laurel and Hardy. Um, that was really hurtful to me. Uh, because it, uh, you know, it made me feel bad. Um, it also made her feel bad, and she would stick up for me, which made me feel very good. Um, but that was when I kind of began to isolate myself. I knew I was different than the other children, um, and I began to kind of self-medicate and comfort myself with eating more food, uh, which was very self-sabotaging behavior. So I'll continue to show you uh, some of the classrooms we have here. In fifth grade, um, I had a very humiliating experience. Um, my fifth grade teacher had contacted our school nurse and she uh, pulled me out of the classroom. The nurse um, pulled me into the nursing office and said that the fifth grade teacher uh, was very concerned about my weight and that they wanted to help me um, get to a healthy weight. I don't remember anything else the nurse said after that. I also don't remember um, the walk back to my fifth grade classroom. When I got to my fifth grade classroom, all my classmates wanted to know what I had gone to the nurse's office about. Um, I don't remember if I told them the truth or if I lied. I'm guessing I probably didn't tell them the truth because I was extremely embarrassed. It was a humiliating experience for me. When I went home and told my parents about the experience, um, they were insulted. Uh, my dad was a physician at the Mayo Clinic and he contacted the school administrators and wrote a letter to the teacher saying that he didn't want any outside influence um, on uh, my behalf uh, because he felt like he was qualified to best help me with my weight. Um, but And from there I never heard from my teacher again, uh, but that kind of reinforced my cycle of denial. Um, it was, you know, a pattern of of eating, covering it up, making myself feel like I am okay, my parents supported me, I had a best friend. Um, so pretty much my whole life has been a pattern of overeating, um, self-comforting by food, and, um, and then uh, denying that I have a problem because I have the support of friends and family who love me, um, so I convince myself that I'm okay enough. Uh, the teacher in retrospect was very brave and was very progressive and I know that her heart was in the right place. At the time it was very hurtful to me. Um, I felt very embarrassed and ashamed uh, that it had been brought to my attention through the school nurse and uh, it was a painful experience to me. Uh, this has been my experience here um, in the Bamber Valley hallways. Uh, thank you very much for coming on uh, this journey with me in these hallways. Um, it's been my privilege to show you where my overeating began, and it'll be my privilege to get on The Biggest Loser. I want my mom to win The Biggest Loser so we can have more money for our college, and she'll win the money for anything else she wants. I want her to meet someone special and get married. Why do I want my mom to win The Biggest Loser? It would be nice for her to lose, it would be nice for her to lose some weight, and, um, I'll win the money. The hardest part has been that she can't do a lot of stuff with us. Like when we went to the Minnesota Fair, uh, she couldn't go on a lot of rides with us. How did that make you feel? Kind of make me, kind of make me felt uh, sad a little bit. She's a wonderful person. Uh, I love her, and she, and if she gets on, she's gonna work her butt off.